Hi, everyone. Welcome back. My name is Ruth Hendrickson. I run RHM International. It's an honor. It's a blessing. It's a privilege that you're joining me today. I don't take it lightly. So welcome. For those of you who are with us for the very first time, I'd love to know how you heard about it. You can just put us in the put it in the comment. And for everyone, I want to invite you to go to the website, ruthhendrickson.org. There's all sorts of resources on there for you, not just things that I've written or teachings or messages, but there's also recommended resources from other authors, just really good, solid material that can help us as we get healed up, freed up, as we step into our identity as we walk into who God has called us to be. So I just wanted to encourage you to go on that site and take a look around. While you're there, there will be a pop-up that comes up inviting you to join our email list. Please do that. I'd love to have you as part of the family. I promise not to bombard you with annoying emails. We only send out one or two a week just to keep in touch. And they're always going to have some, you know, maybe a blog, podcast, you know, a testimony or something, and just to encourage you, a book recommendation, just to encourage to, to build you up, to keep you moving forward, your walk with the Lord. So again, that's ruthhendrickson.org. And again, I'd love to have you join the family and sign up for that email. So, all right. As I was getting ready for this, the song keeps going through my head. It's from Johnny Nash, and it came out in the early 70s. And that song is, I'm going to pull up the lyrics, the song is, I can see clearly now the rain is gone. How many of us see need to see clearly because the rain is gone? So I was looking at the lyrics. That's all I was going to say. But I'm looking at them I'm like, oh, my gosh, these are so good. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my way. Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's going to be a bright, 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 sh sunshiny day. You know, today needs to be a bright, bright, sunshiny day, doesn't it? And it goes on. It says, oh, yes, I can make it now that the pain is gone. All the bad feelings have disappeared. Here is that rainbow I've been praying for. It's going to be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. Look all around. There's nothing but blue skies. Look straight ahead. There's nothing but blue skies. And then, of course, it goes back into the chorus. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. And how often do we need the, the skies to part, the sun to come out to be able to see clearly now, amen, right? We need, we need that pain gone. You know, just so you know, our God is amazing at taking the pain away. He's really, really good. And if you find yourself stuck in some pain, again, go to the website, check out the Mashaw team. They're an emotional healing and deliverance team that ministers around the world. They're, they really love the Lord. They love you. They want to see you become the person God's called you to be. But anyways... I can see clearly now the rain is gone. Okay, truth. Um, I've been diving into the book of Acts. I've been studying it for quite some time and I'm loving it. I'm loving it. But here it is. The truth is our lives are like a roller coaster ride, aren't they? We go up, everything's go, going great. And then all of a sudden, boom, it's like we just plummet right down or we find ourselves going around a sharp curve and you know, our heads get thrown back and we're trying to throw our hands up in the air, but sometimes we're too afraid that we're hanging on for dear life because we're sure that we're going to crash, go over the railing, something bad's going to happen. And the speed can be frightening. And then all sometimes we're, we're jolted to a stop and then we take off again and, uh, and it can be a little crazy. So what I want you to do for a moment is put yourself in the shoes of one of the disciples, one of those who walked with Jesus, one of those who walked with him on the face of this earth. You know, here they are, they're called from their professions. They begin to follow this individual who came across their path and often said, come follow me. Okay. They said under his teaching, they witnessed the miracles. They even got sent out themselves to do miracles. They did the stuff. They not only sat with the teacher, but they did the stuff. They had conversations with Jesus. Some were even reprimanded by Jesus. Talk about a relationship, right? And all this was on a road that in and of itself was confusing at times, but it was going to get even more confusing. So, you know, in two months of time, when we're looking at, right, um, you know, Jesus, his, his, um, his arrest, his death, his crucifixion, all through that, in two months of time, they go from Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. Think about that. Think of the excitement of that walk. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. 
to the agony and the devastation of the cross, think of the confusion. As you look at that, you're trying to wrap your head around everything that Lord said, but nothing's making sense. Why? Because what's happening, there is no earthly explanation for. The fact that he's going to rise from the dead, the fact that he is the Messiah, the Lord, the Savior, that he died for our sins, as all that played out, it's been talked about. But to really go and experience it would have been a roller coaster ride. Think of the agony and the confusion that surrounded them. Nothing making sense. Like I said, that roller coaster, it's it's going down at a breakneck wreck, a, a break, good grief. It, it's going down really, really fast, okay? Because I can't seem to say the word I want to say, but it's going down really, really fast or it jolts to a stop or, or it throws you around a curve and you're throwing against the side of the car and you're wondering if this thing's ever going to stop and you're hanging on for dear life and nothing's making sense. Nothing's making sense. But in this short time, they move from all of that to the, to the, to the resurrection. And then your mind still really think about this. It's just good to go back, even though as, I, as I'm doing this, it's not the Easter season, but to go back, to go back and, and think of, of this. You know, it, it's, you know, he's, he rises from the dead and you see him again. You're starting to put the pieces together, but only for, after 40 days, only 40 days, a short 40 days, he takes off. He's in heaven. Through all of this, there were seasons of waiting. You know, through a life, we encounter seasons of waiting, don't we? That roller coaster comes and goes, and sometimes we're in line just to get on another ride, it feels like, or sometimes we're paused because one of the other cars or, you know, has the tracks. There are, or sometimes we're waiting just because we're waiting and we're not quite sure what's going to be next. You know, Eddie Ranzik makes a great statement. He says, regardless of what you do not know, make sure you know what you know. It's really important that we know what we know so that in the moments where it's not making sense, in the moments when the proverbial rug's being pulled out from under us, in the moment where the roller coaster is going breakneck speed down that drop, or around that corner. In those moments, we know what we know. We know that we're safe in the hands of, lo of loving God. We know that he will never leave us or forsake us. He, we know that he has us. We know that he goes before us and that he also goes behind us. We know that he is our healer, our redeemer, and our savior. You see, sometimes we don't always know what to do. And in our humanness, or at least what I can do, is I can fall into a trap where I'm focusing on what I don't know rather than focusing on what I do know and who I know. Let me say that again. In my humanness, I can fall into a trap and focus on what I don't know rather than focusing on what I do know and who I know. You see, in our spirit, we should always be running to the one that we know. We should always be running there. We need to come to a place. I need to come to a place where that's the first place I run rather than running to what I don't know and giving that headspace and time and energy. I, I take that, I gather it up real quick and I pull it over to the one that I do know. And I lay it at his feet and I'm like, Lord, this is yours. This is yours. I don't know what to do with this, but you know what I do know is that you do. And so, Daddy, I need you to take care of this. I need you to take care of this. I can't do it. I can't do it. A friend of mine shared a vision that she had. It was actually Patricia King. She was sharing about a vision God gave her where um, she was a new believer and she had this encounter with the Lord. And in this encounter, she was a little girl. And, and she'd been on his, on Abba's lap. Okay. She was a little girl, but she went to walk away in this bully and she knew, she knew it was the demonic and this bully comes in and he threatens her, tries to get her to do something that she doesn't want to do. And um, she just looks and manages to squeeze out of her mouth and that little scared five-year-old voice, you know, it, which is where she was at in this dream or vision. She says, I'm going to tell my daddy on you. And with that, this this little boy in the in the in the dream just takes off because he looked past her and what he saw was Father God. He saw Abba standing right there behind her, and he took off. You see, when we take our problems and we place them at the feet of feet of our Lord and Savior, they have to come into alignment. They have to. In that case, the demonic had to flee because he had no right there. He had no right there. 
You see, back to the disciples, remember everything they'd been through. A lot of what was happening was so not in their realm of understanding. And there are many things that we go through that are not in our realm of understanding. As much as Jesus had taught them, it was still hard to comprehend and put the pieces together. And there are moments where as much as we're in the word, as much as we're sitting under good, solid biblical teaching, as much as we've walked with the Lord, it can be hard to put the pieces together. But there are also aha moments when things click into place. Can you relate to walking through something, not really understanding it until you're on the other side? And suddenly the pieces click together. Again, it's like that Johnny Nash song, I can see clearly now the rain's gone. Suddenly the rain is gone. The clouds part, the sun comes out, the earth warms up and everything looks good again. But it can be difficult to see the fullness in the moment. In Acts 1, you know, after Jesus arose from the de dead and appeared to the disciples, there were 40 days again between the resurrection and the ascension. Um, you know, in, in Acts 1, 4, Jesus is with them having a dinner conversation. And, you know, one of the times he was eating with them, he commands them, don't leave Jerusalem until the father sends you the gift he promises. I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. We have that encounter in Acts 2 with the day of Pentecost. But what did Jesus had told them was to wait because there was something coming. There was someone coming to wait. They needed to wait in that place until they were filled. How often do we go and wait and we get discouraged when God says to wait because we're made for motion. We're made for movement. But there's times when we have to wait for what we need to go be able to move forward in that. We don't know exactly what that wait looks like, how long it'll be or what it means. We just know that we will wait. Of course, on this side of it, we can look it up. We know that. Acts 1 is followed by Acts 2, and that command to wait was followed by the infilling of the Holy Spirit, by tongues of fire, by speaking in languages, by many coming into the kingdom. Why? Because they waited for him. They waited for him. They were entering into a new way of relating with the Lord. They were entering into a new season. You know, blessing always comes on the heels of obedience. When God says go and we go, we are blessed. When he says wait and we wait, we are blessed. Whenever we're walking with him and listening to his commandments, we are blessed. We are blessed. You know, in, in Luke 24, 50 to 53, that's the ascension. And it reads, then Jesus led them to Bethany and lifting his hands to heaven, he blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken. In the middle of the blessing, he's gone. Boop, I'm gone, out of here. Okay. He was taken up into heaven. So what did they do? In this moment, they worshiped him. They returned to Jerusalem filled with great joy and spent their time in the temple praising God. When we walk hand in hand with the Lord, we can see clearly now. When we walk hand in hand with the Lord, that act of obedience will always be followed by blessing. We can trust him with that. But through that, sometimes, th sometimes things don't make sense. They don't make sense. That road from glory to glory, that from moment glory, this middle ground to glory can be confusing and not make sense. So we have to remember, as Eddie Ransick said, regardless of what you do not know, make sure you do know let me start that again. Regardless of what you do not know, make sure you do what you know to do. What we know to do is always to step back into the Father's presence and follow his lead, whether it's to move or to wait. We go hand in hand with him. So may your day be filled with clarity. May the rain stop. May the clouds part. May you see the goodness of the Lord shine down upon your day. Know that you are highly favored. You are a child of the king, that he has plans, purposes, and destiny. And may that song just resound that you can see. You can see clearly because of who God is. You are created to soar on the wings of eagles and to have a whole different viewpoint. It is a vantage point that only comes from having citizenship to the kingdom of heaven. Remember where you're a citizen of. Have a great day, everyone. Be so blessed.